Hi everyone and welcome to Ears On Adventures and um, thank you for watching my video. Today I'm going to be talking about 10 things that surprised me when I went to Disneyland last August. I went to Florida maybe 10 or so times in my life. So going to Disneyland is obviously a very different experience. So these are the top 10 things that really surprised me while I was there. Number one is the size of the castle. So Disney World has Cinderella's castle and Disneyland has Sleeping Beauty's castle. Disney World's castle is an awfully lot bigger than Disneyland's castle. So I was very surprised considering it was the original park um, that it had a small castle. But then when I thought about it, I thought actually Disneyland is, a, is older than Disney World. So my first thing that surprised me was the size of the castle. So the second thing that surprised me was that you didn't need to have a fast pass to meet popular characters. I'm talking about the time when we went, which was in August 2019, which was quite quiet um, for maybe what it's usually like possibly. When you meet a character in Disneyland, you can just walk up and join a line. There's usually only about 10 or 15 people there. Um, whereas in Disney World, you sometimes have to wait hours or you have to have a fast pass to do that. I think you do for some of the characters in Disneyland, but that was one thing that surprised me was how easy it was to meet characters. And also how the characters are a bit more, I guess, freer in um, Disneyland in the sense of that they walk around and they in, like mingle with the guests, which is really nice. And it was quite nice to just have that more freer experience with them, rather than it being a bit more like, oh, we need to meet this character at this time or something like that. So yeah, it's it was a bit more of a freer experience. Experience is less of a planned experience than it is in Disney World. My third thing that surprised me um, at Disneyland was how easy it was to get a reservation for dining actually on the day of whenever it was that you wanted to eat, or if you wanted to change your reservation, how easy it was. Um, when we've gone previously to Walt Disney World, we've had to book our dine-in 180 days in advance to get the really popular restaurants. The restaurants that we wanted to go to, which was Cafe Orleans, um, Storytellers Cafe Grand, um, Grand Californian, and I mean, it also ate in this Italian restaurant in Disneyland, California, I can't remember its name, but for all of them, they were all table service and you can just walk up and sit down, whereas in Disney World, you, you can't really, from my experience, do that quite so frequently. Um, usually you have to have a reservation in advance um, and you can't really change the reservations either, as in like you probably can cancel it, but for some places like Ohana or those more popular restaurants, if you lose that reservation, it's not likely you're going to be to get another one last minute. My fourth thing that surprised me was Fantasmic and how much I enjoyed Fantasmic. Fantasmic in Disneyland is actually very different. Well, the seating area is very different, should I say, than in Disney World. So in Disney World, obviously, you sit down on the benches, you have that whole theatre. It's all really lovely. Um, and I wasn't expecting to like Fantasmic as much as I did, because you kind of stand up around the lake in um, New Orleans Square. I think it's the river. I think it's called the Rivers of America. Um, so you stand around the outside. And I was thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to enjoy it quite so much. We did get a fast pass for it. You do with some of the dining you can get dining packages you like a little seat to sit on and I think you have a bit of a, like a more exclusive area maybe to watch it I'm not quite sure but yeah I was actually really surprised that I enjoyed Fantasmic and I would even go as saying that I prefer it to the Florida one which I was definitely not expecting to say which is yeah I did, wasn't expecting that um but I will be honest I'm not I do like the Florida one I'm just not, I know loads of people love it and I just like it, I'll go and watch it, but I'm not, there's other nighttime shows which I prefer. At 
actually I was really surprised that I really enjoy Fantasmic in Disneyland so I'm quite looking forward to when we do go to Florida next month to see whether or not I still prefer a uh, Disneyland version over the Disney World versions. My fourth thing is Fantasmic and how much I enjoyed it. So the fifth thing that surprised me was how quiet it was at Disneyland. When we went there, it was in August 2019, when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was um, open, had been open since May, so it been open a couple of months, but um, it was just very quiet. I was expecting to have, maybe have to queue to get into the land. We did have a reservation at Ogre's Cantina, and we thought, well, that might be our only chance to get into the land, but we did manage to get there, like, on other like days as well and even when you're walking around it wasn't that busy and that was very surprising. I think part of the reason why was that they were blackout days for annual pass holders so because of that they didn't have, um, they couldn't go in so obviously that does reduce crowds and stuff like that but there was something that really surprised me was actually how quiet the whole park was. There wasn't very many long lines for anything, the longest line was maybe for Space Mountain which was an hour and obviously Smuggler's Run that was probably about an hour. I thought it would be a lot busier than what it was and we were preparing like oh we might not get on much because it you know Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was open but I think we were just very lucky with the annual pass blackout days and the fact that the second attraction in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge isn't open until next year. So we were just maybe a bit lucky on that. But um, yeah, so it wasn't that busy at all in Disneyland or California and um, Disney's California Adventure. So um, that was something that really surprised me. My sixth thing that surprised me was how expensive the hotels are in Disneyland. And what I mean by that is are the Disney hotels. So the Grand Californian Paradise and Disneyland Hotel. So those three hotels are actually quite expensive. When we were looking to go, the Grand California was about $1,000 per night, which is very, very, very expensive. And that was just for a standard room. That wasn't even, you know, anything like that, you know. Um, for us, that's a lot of money. So we were like, mm, maybe not. Um, and even like Disneyland was a, looking about $800 a night. Um, Paradise Pier wasn't quite as expensive. I can't quite remember how much that was. Yeah, the price of the hotels are very, very expensive when you compare them to Disney World. Obviously, Disney World has a lot more in the in way of hotels and resorts, and so they have more rooms to accommodate people and stuff like that. But that was something that surprised me, considering most of the hotels are actually in walking distance of Disneyland. So the hotels that are outside of Disneyland Resort, they are a lot cheaper and there's quite a lot and there's quite a lot of competition. So I was surprised that Disneyland hotels are quite expensive, but I guess they want to maintain that exclusivity and stuff like that. So that was something that surprised me was how expensive the hotels were in comparison to Disneyland in Paris and Disney World. So the seventh thing that surprised me was that you can get extra magic hours even if you're not staying on Disney property. So in Disney World it's usually, from what I know um, and what my experience has been, it's usually Disney World guests that get to get the extra, extra magic hours. And you can get one day because at Disneyland for extra magic hours because we had a pass that was five days and I think if you get a five day ticket or more, you get a day, a morning of extra magic hours. There's only two lands that are open, which is Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. So you can only use it on those two lands. Um, but yeah, I was very pleasantly surprised that with our ticket, we can get an extra magic hour in um, one of the parks. So that was very exciting. Eighth thing that I was very surprised about was how easy it is to walk between both parks and also downtown Disney. You only go through one security park to get into the whole Disneyland, Disney's California Adventure and downtown Disney. So once you go through that one security checkpoint, you're fine. You can walk all between each park and stuff like that. And obviously that's very different to Florida where you have your different parks there, a lot more spread out because Florida's obviously got more land. But yeah, definitely it was a nice surprise was how easy it was to walk between each park. Um, you didn't have to go through separate lines for security. It was quite straightforward. Now, 
Another thing that surprised me was how many original kind of classic attractions, maybe not original, so I don't think they were all there for, for the opening day of Disneyland, but a lot of like classic attractions are still in Disneyland, so things like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, No White Ride, Storyteller Boat those sort of rides are still going and I think that's just really cool because it's quite nice to have those original tra attractions and those, those classic attractions. So that was something that surprised me of how many kind of classic attractions were still running and still very popular as well. So the final thing that surprised me was how their, the rides are similar but completely different. So if you take, for example, Dinosaur and Indiana Jones, so Dinosaur and Mag um, Animal Kingdom and Indiana, Indiana Jones in Disneyland, apparently they have the same track, which surprises me because the rides feel completely different. If I'm being honest, I find Indiana Jones a bit more intense, I guess. So I was quite surprised by how they are the same track. I guess that's to do with the theming and stuff like that and how they can like make you feel like you're going faster or it's more jerkier than maybe it actually is. Guardians of the Galaxy and Mission Breakout and Tower of Terror, they're completely different as well. I haven't been on Tower of Terror for a few years and what I can remember, there's a bit more of a build up to when you drop whereas in <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, you're straight, you just go up and you just straight, you're just dropping, 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 dropping the whole ride, um, which I kind of prefer that because I prefer to just be in the deep end rather than having that oh it's gonna happen soon oh we're gonna drop so I personally prefer that but you might not prefer that also just some of the rides in general like I really like the Incredicoaster and from even though they've got rock and um rock and roller coaster at Disney's Hollywood Studios and one thing that surprised me about that was actually how smooth it was because it's kind of a, to me it's built up as a a wooden roller coaster. I was surprised at actually how long it was as well and how smooth the ride was. Some of the rides and attractions, like how they've used similar features in both parks, they're very different as well. So yeah, that was something else that surprised me. So those were the 10 things that surprised me about Disneyland when I went in August. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other surprises that there are in Disneyland that you felt when you went to Disneyland. Like I said, it was a bit of a comparison between Disney World and Disneyland because most of my experience has been going to Disney World. So yeah, so there was a bit of a comparing both parks but like I said I love both parks I love them both in different ways if you did like this video and you'd like to see more Disney planning videos other videos that relate to Disney give this a big thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button